Okay, it's luggage time. Hi everybody, welcome back, I'm Charles, and this is my luggage setup on my BMW GS. I'm beyond excited to show you all of this because in a week from now, and that's why I'm kind of practicing putting everything together, I will have taken off on that trip to British Columbia that I told you about on my channel. If you haven't heard about that yet, go see my other videos, we will do. So what we're gonna do today is I'm gonna give you a brief overview of all of the gear that I set up on the motorcycle and what I put in the bags. Now, if you're motosexual like I am, you will have noticed the lone rider setup. I'm not gonna give you a full review of the gear just yet. That's coming later, of the luggage, I mean, okay? so. Um, I mean, I packed everything together here just as a practice run and I'll show you what I've done. Let me take you around the bike a little bit. All right, so let's start here. These are the mini bags from Lone Rider. It's six liters. And what I do with the front here, I need stuff that's really quick access and kind of in emergency stuff. So what I do, uh, they're pretty much empty now, is I stuff my rain gear in there. This is the Climb. Enduro S4 um, in this color, this model up on the screen. This is an awesome rain gear. If you want a review of this, let me know, okay? We're gonna do this on this video. I'll tell you what I have and you'll tell me if you want a review, okay? This is meant to go over the Climb Baja S4 jacket and pant that I have. What I do is I stuff the jacket on one side and I stuff the pant on the other side, okay? So other stuff I have in here because it's six liters, it fits quite a bit of stuff, okay? so. It unclips in the top like this. It's just a roll top bag. You might have seen these before. I also carry my uh, trusty sunglasses, the ones I have on. No polarized lenses, please, okay? I also carry my uh, earbuds that I'm trying out in here. And uh, I also have um, a power bank. Now, I, ca I carry a couple of these because um, obviously sometimes you camp in areas where you don't have access to power. And I keep the power bank in the right hand side the brake side of the motorcycle because on the gs as you might know there's a usb port up here so what i do sometimes is i put the power bank in here and then i'll roll the top in such a way as to have my usb wire stick out the side and then i kind of jam it into the fairing here and then i can plug it in and it charges inside of the dry bag of the lone rider bag while it's uh, while I'm going along on the road, so it's very very convenient. I don't have to have a power bank, you know, on my person, uh, you know, charging other things. If I want to just charge also my comms unit on my helmet, I can put the comms unit in here. I don't have to use it all the time, and uh, it charges in the USB port. Kind of cool. Okay, so this is the other side. Again, this is on the clutch side of the motorcycle. This rolls on top here, unrolls like that. I keep the pants in here usually. It could be jacket or pants, doesn't matter. Um, in here, I keep the gloves. Um, these are uh, Gore-Tex Rucka gloves. I'll have the model up here um, in black. These have to wear in a little bit. Um, I've only used them when it's really cold or wet. If you want a review, let me know, okay? Usually I have another set of uh, summer glove from Climb. Uh, the model is up there. Uh, they're from a couple of years ago. Um, I like them. Otherwise, down here, I have a cargo net. Extremely convenient if you have to carry lighter, more bulkier items. They'll strap to just about anything. This is a must have on any motorcycle, in any bag. It scrunches up really quick and you can just put it anywhere, okay? And on the bottom of this, I have just a little wire lock. Um, I, I carry this just for my helmet if I have to leave it on the bike for a couple hours and I don't feel like carrying it around and, or there's no bag for me to put the bag, the helmet in, I might lock my helmet using the D-clasp uh, onto the handlebars or something. Very light, it just goes on the bottom of the bag and I leave it there and I forget about it. Okay, so this is where the party's at, okay? I'll open all of these and I'll show you what's inside. First off, I have the Lone Rider Overlander bag. This is the 30 liter. It's empty now, but I'll have my clothes in here and I'll show you what I use to pack my clothes nice and evenly and in an organized fashion inside of the Overlander. I pick the 30 liter. I have the 48, they come in two sizes. I have the bigger size as well, um, but I chose the 30 liter to go on to the back uh, for my trip because I have a hard time fitting the big size Overlander with the OEM top case together. I kind of feel that the big Overlander, the 48, will you know, fit in this direction, kind of lengthways. And if I put the big bag, um, it'll rest up against my back and it's not comfortable for long rides. And I need the top case for reasons I'll explain a little bit later. So again, 30 liter Overlander bag. If you want a review, let me know. 
The other reason I have the 30 liter here is because it is designed in such a way as to um, abide by regulations for carry on luggage on a flight. Okay, so I'm riding to BC and I'm flying home. The bike is coming back on a truck, so I need to bring my clothes and other essential back with me. So this will be my carry on for my flight. Let me take this off and I'll show you what's in here. Okay, Lone Rider Moto Bags, very simple. They have a quick release clasp here. There's a key that you put in here to lock the mechanism. I didn't use the key just for this application so I could show you really quickly how it comes off. It's that simple and there are handles here and it just comes right off. Okay, I'm gonna use a stool for this bit because I think we're gonna spend a bit more time here and a bit more time on the other side. Lone Rider Moto Bags, semi-rigid bag. If you want a full review, let me know. I'll probably record it. You guys will hopefully enjoy it. Now, the front of the bag, and this is where my um, kind of foot rests uh, in front of this, is the bottle holder from Lone Rider. So I keep an insulated water bottle here and an insulated water bottle on the uh, on the other side. Um, quick access to water and it's a bit heavier than the back of the bag so I like having the weight towards the middle of the motorcycle as best I can, okay? On the back of the bag is the uh, mini or micro bag, I should say. I think it's two or three liters from Lone Rider. I just bought their kit, visit their website. Nobody sent me this to review. Um, I don't have that kind of following yet, but since you'll like and subscribe to my channel, maybe one day I will, okay? And in here, I keep essentials for uh, maintaining the motorcycle while on the road. I will show you what I have in here. Again, roll top, these are waterproof, airtight almost. I keep a few spare rock straps. If you've never used these on a motorcycle, um, know them, use them, get used to them. These are great and they actually help me on top of the bag and I'll show you later. So some extra rock straps here. Here I have a tire repair kit to plug a flat tire that I've never had to use yet. Knock on wood, okay. Here I have um, a little air pump that uh, plugs into some of the outlets on the motorcycle that I've never had to use yet. Knock on wood, okay? Uh, what else do I got? That's it for this bag, okay? It's basically tire repair. Um, I could put stuff like uh, gloves in there if I want to, but I have a tool roll and I'll show you later, okay? So now the top of the bag. I'll show you the back plate first actually because you'll notice that I um, strapped the rock straps onto the back plate. There's all these attachment points. Like that's what's really cool about these bags is they're very modular for what you want. And I've kind of had to spaghetti these into the hole because I hate having to deal with, and that's kind of my um, dislike about the rock, the rock straps sometimes is that you have this flappage of extra material if you don't take care of the loose part of the tie down uh, beforehand. So I've kind of had to mess with this. Um, and I strap a, um, this is called a deck dry bag. I think it's meant for like canoe trips, stuff where there's water everywhere. I use it for this application, works really well. So two rock straps hold these together. They come with these loops. So I don't have to, you know, tie it super tightly so that it sticks to the moto bag underneath because they have these loops and I know they're not going to go anywhere, okay? So this comes off the back as well. Bear with me. Shoe fly go away. And uh, yeah, sea line, seal line makes these bags. Um, I won't review these. If you ask me for a quick uh, review, I, I might, but it's gonna, you know, take five minutes. Short video, maybe. Um, there's a valve to purge the air. I typically will put that on the under other si underside of the bag when I rest it on the moto bag, just because I'm sure it's airtight, but if it rains on it all day, maybe the, there's gonna be some leakage or whatever. I don't think these are meant to be submerged, really. And what I carry in here in this one, these are roll top, is um, my sleeping bag and some sleeping accessories. So I have one of the pillows that I reviewed on a previous video, go watch that. Um, and then I have, this is a sleeping bag liner from uh, Sea to Summit. This is the reactor one. Um, it's meant to add something like eight or 10 degrees Celsius to the temperature rating of your bag. When it's really, really hot, like right now, like my forehead is just beating, um, I might just use it to sleep and forego the sleeping bag altogether, okay? Uh, then in here, I, I might not take it out because I don't want to put it on the ground, it's all dirty. This is just a nondescript um, house brand from um, Sale in Canada. Uh, sleeping bag. It's their La Prairie uh, model. It's rated to 
It's a 32 degree bag, so zero degrees um, Celsius. Um, it was cheap, so I bought it when I started. And at some point I might invest in a higher end um, sleeping bag, like a, a really warmer bag, like a seven or maybe even a 20 degrees Celsius bag and have the, the liner inside if, if I get cold. Um, it takes up a lot of room and the stuff sack that came with is absolute garbage. So I keep it in here. Um, I will abuse this until it rips, until I don't want to use it anymore. And I want to throw it out and buy something else. So on this side, that's what I have in the dry bag. Okay. Now the moto bags open like this, these two little clasps here. And then they do provide a uh, combination lock for the bag itself. Um, I won't give you the combo, whatever. Um, and this will go in here. I don't want to lose that. Um, and then they open like so, and it's a roll top bag. These are waterproof. The um, moto bag itself has holes on the bottom for venting and drying off if there's wet stuff inside. So it's waterproof, but just, you know, be cognizant of that fact because water might kind of slowly seep in, but they thought of a solution. Okay, so if I put this back the right way, the bag has an inner bag as well, which is, that's waterproof for sure. There's no holes in this bag, okay? So the bag comes right out, like so. I like to, and you'll notice, I like to underpack. And what I mean by that is, I like to leave room in, I mean, apart from the dry bags, but I like to leave room in just about any bag because you're gonna buy food. You might last minute say, hmm, it's been cold last few days. Let me stop in a store and get a sweatshirt. Um, you might need other stuff. And if you pack everything super tight and you're out of room, you can't add anything. And you're gonna end up using your cargo net more than you want. And stuff might not be waterproof where you're packing it and it might rain. So I tend to underpack. okay? So you might see that there's room in here to spare and that's by design. So first in here is my camping chair. This is the Helinux Sunset Chair. It's one of their high back versions. This is a picture. Um, I like this chair. If you want a review, let me know. Um, I'm happy because if you look at the specifications of how wide the moto bags are and how wide the packaging is this, it, it's almost like you're missing a couple of inches for it to fit in the bags. But since it's kind of flexible and the poles inside are only so wide or so long, um, it does fit in whichever moto bag I want. The moto bag on the brake side is a 31 liter and I'll show you the 38 liter in a second on the other side, okay? So camping chair, great. Next I have this is stuff for the bike that I don't mind getting dirty in this bag in the 31. This is a motorcycle cover, uh, Nelson Rig. It's their uh, premium deluxe, like ADV version, Defender Extreme, I think they call it. I'll, you know, here's a picture. Um, I carry this just because sometimes you're in a campground and it's very piney and you don't want a whole bunch of resin on your bike. That's the only reason I can think of bringing it. Uh, if I'm gonna park the bike in a very conspicuous area overnight, for example, I might just cover the bike for safety. And since I have room to spare and since it doesn't weigh much, I carry this with me, okay? Next, a pair of flippy floppies for a shower and the camp, okay? These are pretty nondescript uh, rubber. Then I have my AquaQuest Guide Camping Tarp. I use this quite a bit when I have to set up in the rain. This is a 10 by 13 tarp. It's way too big for almost any application for a single person. I don't camp with it only. I don't sleep under it, but I use it to cover the tent if I have to set it up in the rain so that I don't have to you know, mess with a wet inner tent and it's just not fun in the rain. But if I have to, I have this. Also like today, uh, it's super scorchy. If I'm taking a zero for the day and I'm taking a day off in camp, I might set this up next to the tent and give me a lot of uh, shade for an area to sit in and do some light uh, cookery under the tarp, for example. I also keep a um, roll of paracord in here, fits in the bag, all good. There's room to spare in this carry case. So if I wanted to have like a, a set of tent pegs in here, just for the tarp, for the tie down points, I could. So AquaQuest guide tarp. If you want a full review, let me know. Next, I do carry a Thermarest bug repellent. If you don't know what this is, know it. It works. Um, the carry case also has room for extra cartridges and stuff. I'm not gonna review this. It just works. Buy one, they're cheap. Just carry one around and you'll love it until the end of your days for mosquitoes and whatever else, okay? It is hot. Let's get through this. We got, um, this is a Thermarest uh, Z seat. I use it to sit on. It might also prop a pillow um, in the tent. Um, it doesn't weigh anything and it fits really well on the bottom of the pack. So I carry this with me, okay? For this trip, I'm gonna carry a camping hatchet. 
Uh, I'm going to be tenting and pegging the tent in uh, kind of rocky uh, soil, uh, dense soil. I use the back of this to hammer the stakes in. Um, I don't think I'll have to cut up any limbs or any trees or whatever. It is heavy, it's a bit of an indulgence, um, even if I don't know if I'll use it. I don't always use it. It's not like I carry an ax, uh, but I do carry a cheap uh, camping hatchet um, on this trip, at least. Um, then, again, I don't know if I'll do any pruning or anything of that nature. Just in case, uh, this is a uh, silky gomboy saw uh, in its carry case just to protect the rest of the contents of my bag. Um, not sure I'll use it, doesn't weigh much. I know it adds up, but I'm not backpacking. I'm on the back of a heavyweight ADV bike. I can carry this, okay? Okay, so I had to change my angle a little bit because the camera got as much heat as I have. I'm sweating through my shirt, but I'm bearing with it because I really want to talk to you guys about my stuff, okay? So the last thing in this bag is the gear ties. I saw Xander Budnick use these on his kind of outdoorsy, camping, canoeing, bushcrafty channel. I like him, go take a look. The link is down in the description. I don't know him, I just like his stuff. He uses these sometimes to cinch down his tent or his tarp and stuff like that. These are kind of semi-rigid, flexible things. I think they're meant for like office work and stuff like that. They're, you can find them on Amazon and you um, can use these to tie out some of the tie out points on uh, the tarp to small trees or limbs or even the bike for that matter, um, loosely. So these are good, I like these. They don't weigh anything and I can just set them on the, uh, in the bottom of my, uh, of my bag here. Uh, let me show you the top of the bike and the top case. Okay, so top case, this is the OEM BMW top case. I think Touratech makes these for them at the very least. I know because there's a, uh, a sticker and it says Touratech GmbH on there, so I'm pretty sure Touratech makes these. Um, these are the gloves that I use that I alluded to before. I put a picture up there before, but uh, here, here they are. I just put them in here for the basis of this. Um, in here, I, I might carry an extra dry bag. These are the Lone Rider dry bag. I'll show you one all opened up, but this is one of the 10 liter ones. They don't weigh anything, and I just keep them in the top case. Um, I might have odds and ends, like extra little rags and stuff like that in here. In here is going to be where I keep my um, filming equipment. Uh, I have a couple GoPro pros even if they overheat sometimes um, and I keep them in here. Uh, I might also have stuff like water bottles, I might keep a little bit of food in here, um, whatever it is. I'll also make one confession. I don't know, apart from in one of the moto bags, where else to put my tool roll. I bought the Lone Rider Tall bag, which is the bag into which one would insert the tool roll. I just don't know where to strap the tool bag in a useful way. Do I strap it to the bottom of a moto bag? Uh, the tops are used by the dry bags. I don't know where to put it. So I put it in here. It is heavy. Um, if you want a full review and a full content of my uh, tool kit, um, let me know in the comments. Uh, but I, I keep it in here. It fits in here nicely. And even if it's heavy, it's in the middle of the motorcycle. So it doesn't, you know, way more than something else I'd put on the other side of the bag, uh, uh, of the bike in a bag, and it, it fits right in here in the middle, and that, that's where I, I keep it. So most of this will be um, taken up by my, fam uh, my, my filming equipment. All right, so I'm just gonna take the uh, moto bag off of this rack, very simply, just using the latch. It's a little bit more difficult on this side, especially if you're not using the center stand, but it comes right off, okay? So same setup as on the other side. Um, back plate, rock straps, you've seen it, I've done it, okay? So on the front, again, this is where my leg would be, um, is another water bottle holder. And on the back is uh, my first aid. I bought these morale straps just to help identify. If I'm in an accident or something, people are confused as to where my first aid is. If they notice the bag, then uh, you know they can just have a rummage in there and fine. So in here, what I have is first aid stuff and then some, a few extras, okay? Um, I have a pair of work gloves. I have a small, small pair of work gloves um, in the tool roll that I showed you, but these are a bit more robust and rugged. If I have to work in the, in the woods, if I'm out kind of wild camping and I want to work uh, trees and stuff, these are really useful for that and they prevent, uh, cut. they use these in factories. They prevent you from uh, from cutting yourself. Um, this is just your basic kind of medical kit. Um, it comes in a dry bag. Uh, there's a lot of um, loose space in here, so I can add stuff. This is good for a few people for um, for a day or two. I'll carry I'll carry medicine in here, um, tablets for my headaches. Um, 
if I need to carry, uh, you know, diarrhea pills or other stuff of that nature, um, spare AA batteries, things of that nature, I might carry um, in here, okay? Uh, then I have a uh, Katadyne B3 water filter. I haven't had to use this much because most of the time I'm camping where there's, you know, drinkable water available. But if I'm wild camping, this might be an idea for you if you're out, um, you know, really ADVing as it were, and you just want to find water and make sure you don't die or get dysentery or Jardia or whatever, um, you can use one of these. Um, I haven't had to use it much, but I do really like it. It's great in a pinch if you're stuck, okay? And you can't buy water. I carry an extra rag. This is a microfiber cloth. I might use it on my helmet if I don't drop it and get sand all over it. Um, and th these are just useful. And last but not least, I keep, um, this is a nice kind of Leatherman, um, uh, multi-tool in its little uh, pouch. I don't know what model. This is a Surge model, Letterman Surge. And I also squeeze into the um, carrying case a fire steel for if and when my lighter runs out. I do carry a lighter at all times. I have one on my person and I have one in my kitchen kit on the in the bag in here. But I carry a fire steel just in case, okay? So that goes in here. All right, I've had to give the camera another break. It is ridiculously hot today. It's also quite ridiculous how poorly the GoPros perform in hot weather. It's hot, but it's not that hot. I guess it's because the sun was out, but now it's in the shade. So hopefully it'll last long enough for me to show you my other bag, okay? So same arrangement as before. Uh, the deck dry bag is on top with these rock straps securing it to the moto bag. Taking this off in real time. All right, again, the straps fit into these little loops. Um, in here is mostly my tent. It is a MSR Elixir 2 tent. It's from a few years ago. I really like this thing. Um, I, uh, this is the Elixir 2, the two-person tent. If you're gonna tent off your motorcycle, uh, or camp off your motorcycle, I should say, um, always think of having a tent that's rated for one more person than are actually involved in the camping activity. So if you're two up on the bike, uh, maybe invest in the Lone Rider ADV tent or the Moto tent, actually the big version. The, the ADV tent I'm sure would work for two people as well. This is maybe a bit small for two people. If you want a full review, let me know in the comment section, okay? So this is the tent. There's nothing else in here. Um, the bag the tent comes with obviously isn't watertight, so I just have it in this uh, deck bag, okay? So again, padlock for the moto uh, bags. I just have it one number off for this video. Uh, and then these two clasps here. Um, clip, the bag rolls up. The beauty also of having the um, rock straps attached directly to the moto bags is I, don't, I never have to take the rock straps off. If I'm not strapping anything to the top of the bag, um, I just, you know, cinch these up um, and tighten up and I'm good. Um, there's a bit of flappage, but you know, who cares? Um, these are still really good to have uh, on the moto bags, even if you're not carrying anything, okay? So again, there's a dry bag in the moto bag. This one's a bit more packed, but again, it still has a lot of room in there. So I'll set this aside here and I'll show you what's in here. This is mostly my kitchen setup and the food situation. So this is a 38 liter. There's more room in the bag here. Um, I have a 10 liter dry bag from Lone Rider and in here I carry most of my food items. Um, we got some dehydrated such and such and uh, that's what I keep in here, okay? So you might have another bag in here at some point with some fresh food and whatever else. Um, I like these dehydrated meals in a pinch when you're camping, it's all good, okay? So setting these aside here. Then I have my kitchen um, implement bag in here. Um, I'll show you what's in here, but this is the Lone Rider uh, packing cube. They come in various sizes. The two big sizes are meant for clothes and the small size, there's, you can still pack a lot of stuff in here and these are meant for underwear or for different applications such as this one. I use it for my, uh, for my kitchen camping stuff. So zipper here, uh, just a quick summary of what's in here. I keep a, a bug net for my face if the thermo thermocell is having a hard time keeping up. Um, extra thermocell bits in a Ziploc bag. Uh, then I have, you know, a head torch or a headlamp, depending on what country you're from. Uh, I have a fire starter. Um, I got this in a bundle that I bought for camping and I just kept it. I haven't had to use it, but I still have it just in case it's a bit wet. Uh, long spoon for my meals. You don't want to get all clammy and disgusting on your fingers and have a small spoon. So carry this, okay, as my stuff falls into my bag. Then I have um, other stuff that I keep in a big Ziploc. So in here, I will have um, tea bags. 
I will have dish soap in its own, you know, Ziploc. I will have cooking oil in its own Ziploc. I'll have a spice mix that I built, a, that I made at home, that I mixed at home. I'll have salt and pepper in here. Um, I'll have um, shower gel and shampoo in its own Ziploc, in the Ziploc, in the, you know. So um, I'll find if I have to hang uh, my food, uh, a way to fit this in whatever bag I'm using to hang along with my toiletries like underwear and stuff like that that'll be in my uh, in my overlander. I need to hang that if I'm in bear country. Remember to hang your deodorant because bears tend to love food and the deodorant, okay? So in here, and in here I have just a little um, carry case um, that I don't really have to use the case but it has like a rag in here from MSR. This came in the uh, kitchen kit that I bought um, and there's a little plastic um, cutting board that I like using if I am gonna be doing some uh, some cooking. There's a plastic cutting board in here, okay? Uh, also, lastly, uh, are another set of kitchen utensils that I carry. Um, and in here I have uh, instant coffee. Uh, I might keep some sugar bags, you know, that I carry around uh, in the kitchen stuff, okay? So that is what is in the um, little kitchen bag. What else do I got? I got a little camping lamp. This has a hook that I can use to um, attach it to the top of the tent. It's um, USB recharge and it's really cool for, I don't know if you can see properly now because the sun's out, but um, it's really awesome for providing just enough light inside the tent that I can either talk to you guys or have some, uh, some ambiance as it were, okay? Um, there's this thing that is supposed to attract bugs. I, I can't see it and I don't know that I want to attract bugs. Like if they're supposed to die in there in the mesh, I, I have never tried it or used it. Um, I've just had it as a as a lamp, okay? Um, that's gonna go in here. Let me take the shades off for this last little bit. It is crazy hot, okay? Uh, what else? This is my um, sleeping mat, Sea to Summit. Um, this is the ultralight insulated, size large, um, from, uh, from Sea to Summit. Um, if you want a review, I promised one when I did my camping pillows review, so I'll probably give you a review of this. Um, I like it. It's of the ultralight variety, so it fits in here really wonderfully and it doesn't weigh anything. So that's awesome to sleep on. Then I have a um, camping towel. This is of the uh, quick dry microfiber variety for when I go shower. Um, it comes, it's called a pack towel and it comes in a nice little carry case that I can also include like, you know, some soap or some toiletries in there if I want. So that goes in here. Uh, then I have my camping grill. This is just a uh, some sort of Asian product off of Amazon. It's titanium, it comes in its carry case. You can see that I've used it quite extensively. Um, I'm gonna have to wash it before I leave, but I mean, you know, this just soot and leftover fat from the steaks I've cooked on this, but this is great for on the fire. Um, if your campsite doesn't have a clean grate, so I carry this around with me. Um, I have a sort of camping bushcrafty knife I keep with me. This helps with cooking a little bit. It can help, uh, help with batoning or some splitting for some kindling. Um, and just because it came with the knife, I also have a fire steel that is in the sheet here. If I lose the other one, you can never have enough, you know, um, ways to light a fire, honestly. Uh, it's not like I'm surviving out there on the bike. If something's wrong, I can just get out and go someplace, but it's nice to know that I have you know, it's a fire steel. You just keep one around and it'll it'll just back you up if your um, lighter goes, okay? Uh, there's also a lighter in my in my kitchen bag. Then I have this little pot setup that I really like. This is from Tokes. Um, I might give you a quick rundown on this, kind of what it comes with, provided the GoPro stays with me, okay? So it comes in a little carry bag and this is the 1.1 uh, liter, so 1100 milliliter pot set. It comes with a pan on the top, and I'll show you the rest of what's in here. Um, it just kind of clips like this, and you can cook an egg in here. You can, some bacon bits, you know, when you're, when you're kind of, um, you don't want to carry a pan with you. I don't know that I want to carry a pan with my, my camping gear uh, on the bike, so it comes with a little cute little, little pan, okay? Um, I'll put it all back together later. Uh, and then what I do is for, because there's stuff that kind of, um, uh, fits into itself and into the, the, the container. So I have a microfiber towel that I use to keep everything from jiggling up in there because it's, it's a bit noisy if I don't do that, right? So um, I'll set this aside because there's something in there that I've kept that I want to show you. So microfiber towel, and in here is the 750 uh, milliliter mug from Tokes. It also serves as a pot, and this version has the bale handle, which I keep on the bottom of the big pot because it clips with these two little tabs onto here. And if I don't take the handle, the bale handle off, 
Um, it doesn't fit in the other pot too well, so I kind of save myself the quarter inch here, take the handle off, put it in the bottom, and it works. Um, I like this because it allows me to just have a mug if I want to just boil uh, a little bit of water for a coffee. Um, I can take the lid off and just boil, and uh, it serves its purpose really, really well. And if I wanted to hang it, I have the bale handle, okay? So again, take the bale handle off, really simple. It's titanium, doesn't weigh anything, and it's rather flexible. I have another microfiber towel, again, just to keep everything from rattling inside. And in here is the Tokes uh, twig stove. So set this down here. It comes in its own bag because it does get kind of dirty. The twig stove is, I mean, I carry it because it doesn't weigh anything and it's a nice backup for, I don't expect to run out of fuel, camping fuel, which is in another um, implement that I have in here, but it's kind of fun to use. Like if I just want to boil something, I have some time, I want to, you know, collect some twigs, I just have the twig stove. So the twig stove is something like this. You do need a degree in mechanical engineering to put this together. So the two middle bits kind of lock into each other and then you turn over this bit and it goes into here. It's not the most stable thing in the world, but you can tent peg this in the holes, provided you don't have plastic tent pegs. Um, one of you's done it. I know one of you's done it. Um, and then you feed the, uh, the fire from the front here or the very top. And if I want to use um, any size uh, mug or pot that I have from Tokes, I can just set it on top here. The small mug isn't that stable, honestly, but the big pot kind of works. And I have it because it's fun to use. And again, it doesn't weigh anything and it's kind of cool if I uh, was to run out of, uh, if I was to run out of camp fuel, okay? So twig stove, kind of cool. Uh, last but not least, it is hot, all right? Camera, stay with me for this last little bit. Here's my kitchen gear or the main kitchen gear, I should say. This was from GSI. Um, it's kind of a backpackers, or if you're car camping, you're gonna wanna carry more than this, but it's kind of your backpackers camping uh, kit. It comes in its little bag, and the bag, wait for it, actually will double as a sink. Uh, there's some stuff on the bottom here. Like on the bottom, I keep the wind um, sheath for the stove. Uh, but this is lined in such a way as it'll hold water. So you can use it to collect water off your tarp if you want, uh, or you can use it to uh, clean some dishes and just uh, use it as a sink for whatever, your hands and whatever else, okay? So this goes here, and this is the main pot and everything fits in here. This has a handle uh, to use as a pot, and then I'll show you what's inside. And everything fits together in here just so, so I promise I'll do it later. It's got a lid for the um, bowls and mugs. So what is in here is, set this down, is a series of bowls. So there's one that is lined with neoprene. Uh, so you can use it for a hot beverage. Uh, and this is a bowl for just about anything else. Um, and then there's a lid for this if you wanna keep bugs away from your chopped up onions or whatever. Um, there's a lid. I keep some camping fuel. I don't carry a backup for camping fuel, because I'm only leaving for a couple weeks, you're not gonna run out. And if I run out, I'll just stop at a store somewhere in a big town and buy another one. And I have the twig stove. I've had this for a season and I can still use it. It's all good. Don't carry too much fuel. That's kind of just dead weight. You can save this, okay? I got some cheap plastic utensils. I just use these for, for mixing. They come with whatever, I just leave them. And in here is the little stove uh, from GSI. Uh, I don't know what this is called. I don't even know if they sell this on its own, but this is the little camping stove. Works really well, no problem with it. There are, I'm sure, better stoves and I don't care. It comes in the kit and it works really, really well. And then on the bottom of everything else, you've got um, the bowls and the top of the, the pot. Um, I'm gonna have to put this all together again, aren't I? Anyways, that was my camping gear. This is what I carry with me. As you can notice, I kind of underpack and I leave myself room to add stuff during the trip if I need to bring extra clothes, if stuff doesn't all fit in the overlander for my clothing, uh, I'm good. I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, this is something I just threw it all on the ground to show you everything I have and I'm bringing with me. If you want a review of an individual piece of equipment, I've said it time and time again, leave me a comment and I will go out of my way to film the review video for you um, and put it out. Um, otherwise, I will do my very best to bring you with me on my trip to Vancouver. Um, it should be a bucket list thing, a life altering event, um, all the superlatives that you could ever want. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like. 
uh, where I've been camping, where I've been staying, and hopefully you enjoy that and you've enjoyed this video. Think of throwing me a like and maybe even subscribing to the channel. I've been Charles and I'm gonna go shower because I'm just soaked. See you guys later.